Disney mountaintop. Hey guys, we made it. Yes, we're, we're here. Dead. There he is. Trev, you excited, man? Yeah. <laughs> Freaking ready. All right, guys, we made it to Makers. Um, gonna get inside, get a tour, and do a quick, uh, I don't even know what to expect with this uh, barrel pick, but it should be a lot of fun. See you guys soon. As the sign says, tour starts here. Quick overview, still house. We have all of our office space here. So this is actually Bill and Rob's offices in this building. Um, our quality control lab. So <laughs> this is our quality control right now. Keep that in mind and then I'll show you where quality control is being built. So obviously when you go past Heaven Hill, you just see all of that like black on the side of the buildings. This is a big part of Margie saying, hey, I wanna be able to like have this place be beautiful. So that's why all the buildings are just darker color. It's actually not black, it's a super dark brown that you can kinda see when you're a little bit closer. Guys, we are in the Maker's Mark warehouse. This is awesome. So you might be wondering, uh, one thing that Ed Maker is like, why are these all empty, right? Is yeah. this like, is this just warehouse just for show? If you look up, you're gonna see that there are barrels up there. So at Maker's, we hand rotate our barrels. So every single barrel at Maker's for the first three years will always start at the top of the warehouse. Oh. So what this tells you is that we just emptied these out and then these aren't ready to be brought down. Brought down. Interesting. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so you're going to want to be able to continue to hit the side to side. Yep. Um, give it a decent wax. You're not going to break it. So don't. Can you like give me a demonstration? Uh, yeah. So you just want to continue to hit okay. here, here, and keep doing it. And eventually that bunk's going to pop right out. So how hard do we do it? Uh, you can go as, you're not going to break it. And you want to go as hard as you can. As hard as I can? Yeah. Keep it up. Keep it up. Loose. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> oh, baby. Put it all the way in there. 
And don't cover it up yet. Uh, give it a little swirl. Perfect. And then you're gonna cover it up. Make sure that seal's really, really good. Is there like a proper holding yep. technique? Right there is great. Yep, and you're gonna pull this out, and then you're gonna wanna be able to get it right from there. Okay. I don't know why this just feels right. And you can actually, you just let that roll. There you and go. And you guys let, open that up, and it, worst case scenario, we spill a little bit. All right, Trevor, I got a quick question for Yeah, yeah, what's here. up, what's up? Um, so, what's the, like, the procedures for rotating these barrels in and out and above and down? Like, what is that? Yeah, for sure. So, you're actually going to have this uh, behind you. So, I mean, it's truly done by, by hand, right? So, first three years is going to be the top of the warehouse, and then we're going to be able to rotate those down. So, three years traditionally, and that's going to be, hits a taste vision, one of those flavors that we're going to be able to try, rotating down to the bottom floors. When you're rotating down to the bottom floors, you are gonna have an elevator that's gonna to be towards the very end. We're gonna be able to roll those barrels out and we actually put them on a jack like this. Okay. So they're stacked three high, put them on here. And then obviously, you know, if you're like racking barrels, you have to actually make sure we call it like clocking. So you have to be able to spin it because you're gonna be able to roll that barrel in. And we always wanna make sure that the bung is facing up. Right. Yeah. So something we're actually super proud of, they just had the, uh, the bourbon festival. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was the first time they had a, a women's team and the makers of women's team won the whole thing. Really? Yeah, so a couple of the, the women of the gift shop Good and the bottling them. line, absolutely. And so we were, we were stoked, they were training and, and so we all saw that. It was just, it was great to be able to see. So Makers That's rolled awesome. out the badass women. Yeah. In this yeah. beautiful door. Whoa, dude, that's badass. And it's nice and cold in here. Yeah. say like when's the last time you had something bitter you're like ah maybe last time i had an ipa yeah. there's just like not as much of an yeah. association with things that are bitter that are great and memories that we celebrate right right so we're coming here today because you're going to be able to recreate what bill and margie did and they have their own flavor vision right and then you had bill samuels jr he created his vision for makers 46 and that was to create a bigger and bolder version of makers with a longer finish so when we're going through and we're thinking about, we want to be able to do our barrel selection. When everyone else was doing it, we knew that we really couldn't do it in our own way. We couldn't roll out four barrels of makers and have you try them because we rotate all of our barrels and we believe in consistency. So all of a sudden that would be a really boring tasting. You would just be <laughs> right here trying these like four things that are pretty similar. So 
would love for you to do is kind of write down what you think that your state profile you would want to go and do. And then we can kind of chat, we'll see if anyone has similarities, and then we'll build at least two right away. Okay. Of those, just so we can start to dive in and see how it's going to work. way to do it. But go ahead and write down, like, kind of theoretically, what what you're like leaning towards. And if you could just throw out a recipe right away, let's do that and we'll go around the room. One, two, So each stave is gonna end, they're 10 milliliter. Okay. You're gonna wanna pour slow, especially for these. What I would recommend is not just filling all the way up, because say if all of a sudden you over pour on one, then you just messed up the entire selection, okay. right? So if there's two, don't fill up two and then go ahead and fill up one, just fill to 20. Okay. With P2, and you definitely wanna be able to use this as well. All right, and you would fill it because there's two, you would go to 20. Yep, exactly. Okay. Yep. And then a lot of people tend to hold up like this to be able to see it. Okay. Um, this will make it uneven. Okay. So for a better measurement. Try to keep ex it down. Keep it down and then be able to like, look here. Welcome to Trev's cooking channel. <laughs> Trev, 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 what are you cooking up right now? All right, so today we're just going to be brewing up the most delicious maker's blend known to mankind. Um, we call this we call this heaven in a glass. Um, first ingredients: P two. Don't ask me what that means. P two. <laughs> we just went through it, dude. <laughs> I need 20 of this guy. Cuvée, mm -hmm. it's French for delicious. <laughs> Pretty sure that's not right, but we're gonna go with that today. <laughs> Pretty sure So that's you're not. telling me you know French now. I do not, but it doesn't sound right. It's okay, I speak French. <laughs> Don't ask me what San Diego stands for. Are you doing math right now, Trev? 20. I took a math class once. Okay. Just once? Yes. <laughs> Made a C. up doing his blend? Yes. Alright, we're uh, and we're three of the Mendian, correct? Yep. What's um let me ask you guys this um, I think you nailed that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to, I mean to lay this whole thing out like this and yeah. uh, like be able to blend and create your own I mean like true when the crafted time blend. They took, they didn't want you. Yeah, no, it doesn't get any better. I, I'm just what, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity, and I think you guys. Yeah, you're you're welcome. I mean, that's I mean, with, that was the one thing we talked about early on was getting people involved and not just doing this whole thing ourselves because I mean, it, it truly is like a community of people. Yeah. Like the people who support what we do, and like we started the the club because of that. Like that was the whole part of. Part of it. Yeah. I mean, we wanted to be able to do something that was fun and get people involved in, yeah. and all of that. All right guys, so we just finished blending. Uh, Trev, why don't you reveal the name for our pick and uh, I want Karen to talk a little bit about the, the flavor of it. What do we got, what do we got Trev? All right, so we picked a number five. That means nothing to you, but what it means to us <laughs> is that the blind speaks. And we kind of, you know, I, I say we, Jason and I, were kind of leaning towards number three, 
We blinded them, and it was a uh, a blowout win for number five. So blinds really hold a true, you know, power. They speak. Yeah, hence, the blind hence, speaks. Hence, hence, it doesn't hence matter. The, name, the blind. It doesn't speaks. matter how much you like it when you throw it blind. You know, whatever is the best is what we're gonna do. And, and Karen, Karen, can you describe a little bit of number five? Why do we pick it? You know, it was the complexity, the viscosity, mm -hmm. and um, the uh, finish for me. It's always about the finish, I mean, what you get on the finish. The, no the nosing notes were absolutely wonderful on both blends. Mm -hmm. But the uh, difference, I think, came down to the finish for me. And big shout out to Trevor over there. Trev. Hey, what's up? Thank awesome. you. Thank you so much for uh, for Lee for guiding us through this crazy tasting. Oh my gosh, couldn't have done it uh, without my co-pilot over here, Phil Olson, crushing it as well. Give it to yeah. Phil. What's up, y'all? Phil, the, the Maker's Mark Lumberjack extraordinaire. <laughs> He's cutting wood and blending blends. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? So this is gonna be your birth certificate. The birth certificate. I love it. I love this. I love it. Do I do my signature? Yeah. yeah. Whatever, whatever yeah. you want. Whatever, whatever you want on there. You don't put go braids. Probably put the wrench in there somewhere, <laughs> right? Yep. Yeah. Hold on, let me do. So Trevor, tell tell what yeah, what, yeah, what is happening in here. If you want, you can take a mask off uh, as long as it's just us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what? Yeah. So this is one of our other oldest warehouses. So we are a big fan of the jewelry. So this is the yeah. uh, spirit of the maker. And so what this is is that you have the red as representation of the wax. You're going to have the blue that's in here as representation of the water. The green is going to be for our grains. You're going to have that amber color that runs through to be representation of the whiskey. Uh, you can see these little uh, angels in here to represent this angel share, but it's just, it's truly one of the most like breathtaking spots of the distillery. It is, and uh, thank you for the explanation. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's very interesting. Yeah, and I think just being able to see this and look up, um, Rob was reaching out to Dale Julie for a while and kept saying, it was, I was impressed by his work and said, you know, mm -hmm. and there's, a, there's something here, there's a collaboration here. There's an art installation here all throughout the distillery. Okay. Yeah. So Did he have them outside? Yeah, so outside we just did around. that at Cheapwood in oh, Nashville. Cool. Nice. I mean, it was
fed lake, all limestone rich water. This is a hunk of limestone. You look at this. Millennia ago, this was a coral reef. Because this was in the middle of an ocean. So that coral gets compacted over time, and that's what limestone is. Trent, was it worth it, man? Was it worth it? It's friggin' worth it. <laughs> absolutely. How do you feel in talk? Incredible. What an absolutely incredible experience. You guys are uh, you're in for a real treat, so uh, look out for the uh, Mash and Journey uh, Maker's Pick. You'll, uh, you'll really appreciate it. An absolutely once-in-a-lifetime experience. Thank you so much to the Mash and Journey for this opportunity.